Alrighty, we are live. It is episode 15. I am calling it On the Roads again because we have uh, got some exciting news that just dropped this afternoon that, uh, um, uh, yeah, we have got some information about the first set of Roads to Nationals events. So you, again, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm Ian. This is Alan. No, no. Yeah, and we're ready to yeah. reflex today, and we have right. uh, we have an abundance of stuff to talk about today uh, about some, Fab. Yeah, some really great stuff. Uh, like considering um, uh, having been in lockdown for so long, uh, we've got we've got some really you know exciting news uh, coming up. So let's jump straight into good housekeeping. Um, and Alan, I guess. I guess as as the uh, Alice is a uh, COVID nineteen uh, specialist, uh, um, yeah. you wanted to start off good housekeeping with uh, with just the announcement of uh, of of, uh, of what happened on Monday. Yep. So um, this is the announcement we were all waiting for. Um, uh, was basically that uh, New Zealand is going into level one uh, now. For those of you. No, for those of you in country uh, in New Zealand, you well know what that means. For the, those of you outside the country, it simply means that um, life has gone back. I'm not going to say go, life has gone back to normal, but life has certainly no. gone back to a new normal. Um, yeah. So basically all the restrictions that we saw previously about social distancing, um, gathering of large groups, uh, leaving your home, all that kind of stuff is, is now basically done with. So instead of the fight... Uh, against COVID-19 being uh, kind of internal, now it moves to the borders, to New Zealand, yeah. uh, basically so, preventing people from coming in. Yeah, so the great news is uh, currently in New Zealand, there are zero active cases of COVID-19, which is amazing. Uh, basically, everybody was hanging out for that, that one last person. Yeah. Everyone was like, are they okay? Yeah. Are they, are they going to get there? <laughs> and um, apparently they did. But, I mean, the other thing is no uh, – well, the big part of it is no new cases and over i think i think today today now is day 17 of no new cases so um right and, yeah. and it means especially uh for us and in, in, in the gaming the gaming market and the gaming industry it, it means that uh we can start to get back to um get back in store and, and playing and, and back to a bit normal because the restrictions of the 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 people limits and the time limits on events have all, all been lifted. So, so um, keep washing your hands, though, because we don't want to go backwards. But, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it is really exciting, and, and that's going to lead into uh, uh, more news that we have uh, uh, coming up later in the episode. Yeah. Uh, also, a bit of housekeeping. I just want to uh, uh, quickly quickly do um, a shameless plug for my new business. Uh, so as of Monday, I started out on the road with the coffee with my coffee guy van. Uh, uh, it's a mobile a mobile uh, coffee coffee van. I am based up here in Auckland in the Mount Eden area, and also in the mornings on the roadside on West West End Road between Westmere and Jervis Road at Cox Bay. So uh, so if anyone's uh, around that area between uh, 6 a.m. and 8:30 a.m. on their way to work and you want a coffee, yeah, uh, stop by. Uh, Happy to happy to chat, Fab, and make you make you a coffee, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. Um, so it may it may mean I'm at a few less uh, uh, weekend events, just uh, with uh, with some of the events I'll be at. But uh, yeah, no, exciting times for me as well. Uh, so yeah, that's good housekeeping, um, Alan. I think probably the most exciting thing that's uh, that that uh, happened, and it only happened. Uh, in the last couple of hours was um, up on um, Fab TCG. It was, but um, before we move, before we move from yeah. housekeeping, you just need to do a quick shout out to uh, the uh, Fab players in Hamilton. Um, I went down to the Tron, as we it was as we love to call it, uh, in the weekend. Caught up with um, the Fab players. Here. Week, weekly results as scoreboard since we didn't get any played. So, yeah, but carry yeah, on. So, um, caught, caught down with the Hamilton Fab players, um, uh, gave them a free draft. We actually did like a, uh, there were six of us in total. Um, we actually did a four pack Arcane Rising draft and um, 
I uh, sponsored the draft and said, uh, everybody, unless they opened an eye, they could keep whatever they opened. So that was fine by me. If they opened an eye, I was going to bag that. So i um, just like to thank uh, like James. I uh, hope I got a name right. James, Alex, Zachary, uh, Hannah, and Philip. Uh, that were all uh, down there. Yeah, it was a really good time. Um, and, yeah, they picked up some some sweet stuff. Um, I'm going to try and work with the uh, Hamilton uh, Fair players down there. And the um, cool. community's been a little bit quiet since the lockdown. Um, but, yeah, basically give them a hand helping out. So, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you to the Hamilton players. Um, and now on to the big news. Oh, well, so yeah. what we, results, sorry, results. How did I do yeah. the draft? How did you do? Did I, you I did do? a... Um, I did the perfect trifecta of one, 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 draw, draw, win, loss. Basically, um, no. I was it. Did I? I lost a ranger, beat ranger. Uh, no, sorry, uh, drew with ranger, then beat ranger, and then lost to Rimblade. So right. it was what a you, what, funny old day. What did you draft? Uh, I drafted Rimblade. So six player draft. We had two Rimblade drafters, two ranger drafters. Uh, one dash, one wizard. So I missed the dash and wizard matchups. Um, oh, wow. And played against the um, uh, both Ranger players and the Viserai players. So, right. yeah, it was it was pretty pretty fun. And my pool did have, like, a Arc Knight Ascendancy uh, in it. So that's why I just first picked him. Uh, cool. that way. And also, we, we had four packs. We drafted four packs because we drafted yeah. the whole box. So yeah, uh, the right. decks had a higher, higher caliber than normal. Oh, right, that's cool. Um, yeah, uh, um, I only got into, I only got one event in last week uh, as well. Uh, I went along to Hobby League on Thursday night uh, at uh, Hobby Master. I'm um, sorry, Armory event at Hobby Master on Thursday night. Uh, there were four of us there. Um, and very interesting. So there were four of us there, uh, and the, the the field breakdown was two dash two Kano. So that was that was very really interesting. So, uh, so it start it started with the uh, the mirror matches. So um, myself and Simon were playing Dash, uh, and Kale and Ash um, uh, were playing um, uh, Kano. Uh, and uh, Simon beat me in round one, um, and and actually the Kano mirror match went to time, and they uh, and they. And, and, there, and there wasn't a winner, so so um, second second round I played um, I played uh, Kale and and beat him in a in a very close match, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it was good fun. It was it, it was really interesting um, see, seeing a, a bit different. Um, uh, we we played we played the full round robin and I, I went two one so I, I bit both the Kano players and came second um, with uh, Simon uh, losing to Simon lost Kale but bit Ash and so both me and Simon were on two one but because he bit me in the first round he he took out first place so so uh, it was double dash at the top with Kano Kano at the bottom so. That was interesting. It was it, it was it was kind of fun because um, effectively we were all sort of playing new new at least new to us decks. So uh, so that was good fun. Yeah, but I'm still yeah, wondering right. how how between sixty life between two Kano players they couldn't get it done. Uh, couldn't yeah. get it done. Was everyone just yeah. waiting? You know, who's going to make the first move and nobody yeah, did anything. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd be I, interested I, I, to find I, out. Um. Alrighty, so well, let's get into. I mean, we've got eleven players, and I guess uh, I'm sorry, eleven viewers at the moment. And I'm guessing the thing that they're all here to to see is, uh, you know, what you guys announced on Fab TCG this afternoon. It was pretty was important. It was but pretty important. It by one. So uh, right. this is not to say there won't be roads to nationals in other. In other regions, it's just uh, currently New Zealand and Taiwan have got the um, go ahead to, to uh, have the, the gatherings to, yeah. for it to take place. So yeah, let, let me as, let me be as, very clear right about that. As yeah. the oh, energy, I'll let you take over here. Yeah, so let, let's let's be clear on that on that point is that um, we are definitely we we definitely want to run 
wrote to nationals and nationals in all of our territories. New Zealand and Taiwan are the territories that we can launch in first, uh, simply because New Zealand's in level one. In fact, we were sitting here yesterday waiting for that three o'clock announcement. Um, Taiwan's obviously been very different during the lockdown. Um, Australia is my next hope. Australia just isn't quite there yet. I did a lot of research last week and uh, the light, since we've come back, uh, working on road to nationals and nationals has been my top priority. Uh, so hopefully, I'm hoping Australia. I've got a, a lot of people, uh, Andy, Mickey, uh, shout out to like, RC crew and the Midian Guard there. They're itching um, to get those events underway. Uh, uh, Liam out at Unplugged Games. These are the stores I'm hoping uh, will kind of get these events and you know, they're really keen to run, but we're just not quite there yet in Australia. Uh, Malaysia is still a bit further away and uh, obviously the US, um, we are working on some ideas, but the US is a bit further away. But yeah, we want to run these events for FAB players. I mean, FAB's got a lot of momentum at the moment and we want to give players some high level events, um, essentially. So um, yeah, so New Zealand and Taiwan are kicking off uh, basically from the 4th of July, um, Independence Day. All right. Um, no, you back. Yeah, yeah, I think you, you, you found it out from him. But I think everyone hears us. Uh, yeah, let us know in the chat. Okay. Uh, I can see that. Um, Liam, I see Liam from Unplugged Games is on there. Uh, great little store. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's let's go. So New Zealand and Taiwan are starting um, on the FAB Facebook. Uh, we have, sorry, sorry, the FAB website, fabtcg.com. We've got a, a list of all the stores. Uh, they're running events. So all the New Zealand stores and all the Taiwanese stores details are up. Some of those stores are still sanctioning creating the events. Um, so the exact details will be up in the next week. But you have dates. You have locations. Um, that's the most important thing. Um, there are a few little changes for this section of, of roads. Um, one of the big things is that uh, now, pretty much, you can only qualify for the country. Uh, you can only qualify for the country um, that you are a resident in. Uh, um, now, what was I thinking? Next step. Uh, yeah, so just, yeah, you just got to be, um, you have to be, uh, yeah, you have to basically play your, your primary primary residence. Yeah. Um, yeah. You I mean, can still... and, and, that, and, and, and this is really a lot more to do with COVID-19 where, where obviously border restrictions in New Zealand is very, very are going to be very tough. But, um, uh, yeah, we just want to, uh, it doesn't mean going forward in, in, in following years that we, we will, will continue this, but, you know, 2020 definitely has been a, a very unique situation. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so that's it. The other thing is that um, we haven't given the full details on it, but there is going to be another way of qualifying uh, for roads. Um, if you make top eight at your event, um, you will qualify, uh, but we will be opening it up to uh, points on your 90 day points. So for like, Taiwan, New Zealand, we will make uh, a full announcement uh, that there will be a cutoff date if you're within a certain, like, well, I'll just say X number of uh, X number of players. Um, on your 90 day points, you will also qualify. This doesn't prevent you from attending any roads or anything like that. Um, and obviously there'll be a cutoff point. Um, but yeah, you can still attend roads even if you are qualified from the previous roads. Um, but it just gives us a, an extra way to, to give some players a chance um, to qualify. I mean, there'll be some crossover between those. Um, but yeah, we think uh, it'll be good. Um, so yeah, we'll put an announcement up for how we're going to do that in Taiwan and New Zealand soon with a, a cutoff date. Um, right. I'm just trying to think of the other changes. Otherwise, everything else uh, remains the same in terms of prizes. Um, we Brett's asked me a question. Yeah, I'll come back to your question Yeah, I'll come back to your question in a second, Brett. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here and ask a question. I know, uh, as you were saying, uh, some of the venues are still uh, fixing on details. Um, are any of the... Uh, are these all going to be constructed events, or do the venues have the um, the ability to have their roads be a, a sealed event? Um, all the roads events now will be classic constructed. Um, the simple reason for that, um, to be honest with you, is kind of like a window for like opening arc. Because I mean, even though right. um, people are just coming back from COVID, I mean, it's still July when these events start. 
um, we think people have probably opened up a lot of their stock and um, they are going to be, they're not so interested in sealed. Um, so it's right. not going to be classic constructed for these events. All right. Um, I, I guess uh, a follow-on to that question is um, the season that has been announced runs from July to September. Um, I don't know if you can answer this, uh, uh, <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it out there anyway because I don't work for the company anymore, so now I'm just investigative journalism. Um, we have had a date um, tentatively set for August for um, Crucible, correct? That is will correct, Crucible, yes. Will Crucible be legal uh, in the Rhodes events after release, or yes, is this going to be... Yeah, that will sorry. that will happen. I, I'm not going to say the exact release yeah. date because I'm not sure if yeah. that's uh, um, confirmed. But um, there is at least. Uh, uh, Basically, I guess my question was: uh, Is this was there going to be a format season for Roads where it was only going to be um, uh, Wraith and RK Rising? But um, oh. you've answered that that uh, once once uh, Crucible does launch, it will be it will be legal for the for for the roads afterwards, after its release. Yeah, yeah that's that's uh, that's absolutely correct. Um, so, yeah, so there is, yeah, so, oh, yeah, I wouldn't say anything about um, crucible dates or anything like that, um, but, yeah, there's any any roads that happen after crucible's release, yeah, there will be um, a con classic constructed season that you'll be playing Ark, Ark, Welcome, and Crucible in your decks. That's exciting. That's exciting. Um, so... Uh, with that being said, uh, do, you, do you have the dates set? Do we do we want to run down um, run down the dates there or? Yeah, well, let me let me uh, let's 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 bring up. Uh, I'll, I'll just jump on my other screen um, here, and we'll go through some quickly dates. Um, so uh, Taiwan. If you if you if you're bringing that up on your screen, we can we can share that. Yeah. Cool. Oh, give me, give me a sec. I'll just bring up the yeah. article that links through to the OP page, which is the best way to view it. Uh, All right. Here we go. Let's just give me a second. And it's just... Uh, sorry, All right. So this, okay, is, this, is, this is on the uh, fantasy.com page, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a quick run through now. Okay, so uh, let's just mention Taiwan very quickly. Taiwan has six events. Their season is a little bit shorter, more condensed. So they've got six events running from uh, July 11th to August 22nd. Um, so we've got uh, we've got cats. They're all with the cats footprint stores, which is one of the, the yeah. biggest uh, uh, chain of chain stores. over there, which is great. Yep. So we've got Kaohsiung Playground, uh, Tofen, Fengshan. Zongli and Shillin are all um, representing uh, with those events. Sorry if I get any of those names wrong. Um, so I'm not sure how many Taiwanese players I've got watching, so let's jump over to New Zealand. So the season kicks off on Independence Day on July 4th uh, with <laughs> Vagabonds, Games and Collectibles. So that's the... I bad. What, what could be better? Yeah, so that's the City Vagabonds because um, there is now um, Vagabonds Takapuna has... Funnily enough, uh, reopened now. So that's a long uh, that's that's a long story, but it's cool to have a vagabond um, back open on the shore. Uh, that's followed by Hobby Master, the Hobby Master Entertainment uh, Centre. Uh, they are on July 11th. Uh, then we have a little bit of gap. Um, we get July 25th. We have Dice Jar Games in Dunedin. Um, they are getting an event, so I hope uh, if anybody is keen to fly to Nen, I'll hopefully be flying down. I'm still trying to sort out some flights. Um, with any luck, I'll get down there. Um, good for the seven players. Uh, Dunedin has a, a small but growing scene for FAB. Uh, then we're on to, we have a double weekend. We do have one double weekend uh, this, this time. So the double weekend is the 8th and 9th of August, and it is in Wellington, uh, which I am flying down for. Um, Yes, yes, guys. Uh, and, uh, uh, Steve, I'm going to, yeah, there's a bunch of questions, Ian. We'll, we'll get to those. Yeah, we'll, I'll try and we'll get, get through this. Questions. I'll get to all questions. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, 8th and 9th of August, um, I, me and my wife and my daughter are flying down because the 8th of August is actually my daughter's fifth birthday. So I managed to schedule the Wellington event on her birthday. So uh, we were all flying down. Then August 22nd, we get Mighty 8, uh, followed by uh, Nelson gets an event. Um, that's with Adept Events in Nani on the 29th of August. Um, and then the final one at the moment is uh, Card Merchant West City on the 5th of September. So um, eight Rotary Nationals in New Zealand. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, let's let's jump into it. Uh, there, are, there are a few questions here, so let's uh, let's jump into those. Um, uh, let's start with uh, with uh, Brett, uh, Brett Rogers. He's asking, will there be uh, LCQs at Nationals? Obviously, um, this is a little, a little while away. Um, I'm yeah. not sure if uh, you've got the answer to that um, just yet, but... Well, we're we're in the midst of planning New Zealand and Taiwan nationals. Um, I can't confirm at the moment, Brett. Uh, I'll simply say yes, we do want to have the option for LCQs, um, but yeah, we're still still sorting yeah, out that, uh, venues and stuff. I, mean, like that. I guess part of, part of that as well as um, uh, what you were saying earlier with the um, obviously you get invites for top eighteen, but also having invites for um, off the 90-day XP, so so it, it, in case in case we can't uh, they can't get uh, LCQs up and running due to venues and stuff, there, sh there should still be a way for multiple uh, multiple people to qualify other than just top eighteen those rows of events. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, next up, um, okay, I can I can even bring these up. I've got that. Uh, next up, we have from Kale. Uh, since Crucible is just around the corner. Uh, when can we expect to see some spoilers start to get leaked due to the set being legal for some of the roads to Nats events? Will we get a uh, full set leaked sooner rather than later to help with testing, or is it just here you, <laughs> here you go, or here had 24 hours ago? 24 so, hours, that's that's a luxury, Kale. Why would I give <laughs> you 24 hours? Maybe maybe 12 hours top. Um, spoilers will start... Um, most likely, I don't know if I should really give anything away about when spoiler season is going to start. Well, um, I mean, I, there I, will I, be. I, I, I can't guarantee on that because obviously with COVID and getting things printed and stuff, it's it's still a little bit into the air. But um, yeah, I know yeah. I can't really say too much, Kale. I mean, there will be a lead in time. I mean, the set is a little bit different because we're not spoiling uh, any new heroes because it's a yeah. set that supports the, the current heroes and it's a. Uh, more like a, a, you know, it's a set that supplements, you know, helps round out. Uh, yeah, and we'll like a reinforce, reinforcements pack is, is, is one of the ways I've heard it being described by people, and I think that's a, a, a good way to to explain explain it. Um, yeah, it, it's yeah. good to get flesh, flesh out um, flesh out the characters that we've got at the moment. Yeah, and yeah, at the moment we we haven't discussed uh, with any, you know, kind of just. We, we barely discussed actually running our spoiler season, to be honest. Um, all our focus is trying to get um, road to nationals and nationals underway. So, um, so yeah, I mean, there, there will be time, Kale. Um, I, we're not going to hang players out to dry. But, I mean, I think part of it also will be, it'll be it's going to be cool to people see people really scramble to invent stuff, you know, basically yeah. figure out builds in a short time. I mean, part of me is excited. I mean, part of me is going to be excited to see what you bring, Kale. Um, or like Brett out there oh, and has been uh, yeah, spent yeah, time. Yeah, just to see what, what, what new cards you put in your Guardian build. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Alrighty. Uh, next up. Uh, Steve, Steven Steele. Um, hey guys, another event for South Island, please? Uh, uh, what kind Steven. of there is two. There's two events in the South Island um, uh, at the moment with Nelson and Dunedin. Yeah, uh, at the moment I think we're we're tapped out on New Zealand events. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I can't guarantee. Hopefully we get a great turnout at because um, uh, you know there's there's two strong stores in uh, Dunedin. There's um, Dice Jar and Fable Traders. Um, also, we've got uh, Megazone um, Dunedin coming on board um, as a store. So uh, there'll be free stores in Dunedin. So uh, I don't know. As long as we can, you know, as long as we can get, you know, strong, strong numbers will help. So if you can get anybody to the event, 
uh, that's definitely gonna that's definitely gonna help. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think we'll be planning another one um, at this point, Stephen. Uh, but you know, I hope to hope to meet you actually um, when I get okay. down there. So that will be really cool. All right, uh, this this next one's uh, one of our fav- one of our favorite watches. It's a little bit of a troll, but uh, finally designed the Goblin Hero. <laughs> well, I don't know, Ian. Uh, can you tell me how much uh, involvement you've had in designing cards, uh, Ian? And I'll tell you how much involvement I've had in designing cards. I'm, I'm going to use this to represent that. So, um, I, I, tr- I, tr- I tried to pitch uh, a generic weapon of a stick, uh, and it's <laughs> down well. So, uh, yeah, no, no, no one actually listens to my, my design ideas. Um, yeah. But maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, well, you know, Reinar is like an, an orc, so, you know, um, uh, he's, he's as close as he's going to get at the moment, Leo. All right. Uh, so, Vincent, uh, a little off top, but will there be sealed? I don't go along with coffee at Ian's Coffee Cat. Um, possibly, if there's interest, I can, I'm sure I can, I can put a box. I don't know, of, Ian. Uh, you don't have any play uh, space. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I need to see the table and four chairs set up. Before well, we can, before I, we can sell your product, so, so yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe just maybe singles, I'll, singles folder. Maybe I'll need to. Uh, maybe I'll need to talk to the design team about getting a promo made. <laughs> um, talking of, talking of trolling, um, it's our favorite, <laughs> our favorite developer, just his guardian. Oh, don't say that, Jason. I'll get awfully jealous. <laughs> awfully jealous. And maybe even James. As, but Chris, all right, yeah. We'll admit it, Chris is our favorite, our favorite designer. Favorite of the shows. <laughs> yes. So I assume that was in, in reference to uh, Kale. Um, okay, yeah. Brandon, you've got a lot of questions. A lot of questions. This is, yeah, um, this is, again, getting a bit off topic. Uh, pretty much uh, more classes, probably not until, not until after after Crucible, um, Crucible's really uh, going to be uh, reinforcing the classes that we have at the moment. Uh, but I suppose all classes will be done someday at some point in the future of this possibly. game. It's possibly I think, it. I mean, I mean, I mean people are bad. yeah, yeah, as Brent has, I... I uh, he's here for the bard as well. I so am I, my friend. I, uh, you 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 have theory crafted quite a few versions of bard, if I remember. Oh, I, I keep pitching out. I keep pushing how bard, bard should play. I I want. I really want bard's weapon just to be a loop so that they break over. They break over the heads of their <laughs> opponent. Either that or a panpipe, and it's like Jigglypuff, where you, where you put your opponent to sleep. But uh, again, again, this is why I don't design cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, um, I think I think that's the uh, questions we've got at the moment. So, um, I yeah. suppose the, the main thing is that yeah, just to remember, Road to Nationals really isn't that different than what we forecast. Uh, seasons later, and maybe it's a little bit more condensed. Um, not uh, every course- not every local store um, is getting one. Um, it is a premier event, um, but you know, as we go on, we'll course, hopefully you know more stores available. will get them. Close to the time, we'll also go over um, like price support and stuff for it as well. Um, well, uh, we we were packing up some price support for it. Well, price price support has been announced for it. So just yeah. to yeah, I suppose just let you guys know, uh, it's it is published on that article that James put up. Um, um, so first place gets obviously their appearance fee. So appearance fees are still still happening. Okay. And that's a significant amount of money, but um, you have to go to nationals to redeem that. There's the gold, um, the gold uh, cold foil. Yep. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Legendary drop. There's the Fendel's tunic play mats, cold foil heroes from Ark, and uh, potions. Potions for everybody. Hopefully. Potions. Setting up the bar, as we like to yeah. say. Yeah. So uh, right. yeah, but, but and, all that information we- is in the article. And of course, uh, one of one of the things that uh, is not official but will be happening at a number of the roads is uh, is uh, Radio Reflex's continuing battle of season two, uh, uh, Ian versus Alan. Um, of course, this week we didn't we didn't get uh, any any more games in, so currently uh, the scoreboard is still is still at. 
Ian 20, Alan 16, but Alan is it's catching up only four behind. That's uh, that's one good week in that and you can yeah. catch up. So, um, and, and also, after after last week's uh, winner blocks, I, I feel like you may have a, a viscerae build that uh, that you're a bit more comfortable playing. Yeah, no, no, it, uh, definitely. But I mean, this weekend uh, is going to be. I mean, I'll only probably be playing uh, once this weekend. Um, and it's going to be at our pauper event. So, uh, yeah, let's lead into the Radio Reflex pauper series. Um, so, yep. Card Merchant, this Saturday, uh, 11 a.m. start time, uh, 10 bucks entry. Um, we are playing pauper. Um, now, now as, as we said on the last uh, the last podcast, uh, basically the Radio Reflex pauper series is an unofficial format. Uh, basically, we are at each event, we are slightly tweaking the rules for each event to uh, basically try out the format and to see um, see which format actually uh, uh, works the best for it. So this weekend, we are doing all common cards. Uh, young Heroes, which means that Ira, Ira is um, going to be legal. Um, uh, and your deck has to be exactly 60 cards. It has to be all commons. Uh, and you can have up to six pieces of equipment, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just just to clarify that for those, because I did have a question about it. Uh, yes, yeah, 60 yeah. card deck, but it's not including your hero and its weapon. So if you think about it this way, that um, 60 cards main deck, you have six equipment pieces to uh, fill out, and then you have your hero and your weapon. So, for example, if you're running uh, Katsu with both yeah. of his uh, Kadachis, you would have a total of 69 cards. Six mm -hmm. card main deck, well, six equipment, two Kadachis plus uh, Katsu. Or Ira and two Kadachis. Yeah. I'm just, I just want to go to this question really quickly because uh, uh, this, is, this is interesting. So there's been some talk... Uh, uh, this week, uh, some people realized that there's a uh, Cold Foil Ira uh, promo that uh, it hasn't seen the light of day yet. Is yeah, it yes, really? Uh, oh wow! Yeah, I was, I was not aware website. of this. Uh, it's up on the website, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there that uh, that um, uh, we we don't know officially uh, when it's going to be released and what it's going to be used for, except. I am going to throw a little bit of a history lesson there. It was already up for grabs, and no one won it. Uh, so secret, secretly, it was up for grabs at the Ultimate Pit Fight event at the Auckland Calling. Had anyone won, had anyone won with Ira, they would have won a cold foil. But uh, uh, you, no. you've given up too much, too much information. Now I don't have a credible deniability on the Ira cold foil. Uh, thing. Actually, yeah, um, Steve, I mean, I do know some people had noticed it. Um, a few people have popped up, and I believe Stephen, uh, Stephen there was actually, um, uh, he was doing, uh, he put it up on the fan page. He was actually plotting out all the promo cards, trying to yeah. figure out what he has and what he didn't, and he found a, a few holes uh, in that. So, you know, we, we do we do have secrets, but... Um, yeah, to tell you the truth, I was a little bit disappointed at um, at, at, at the calling when nobody won with Ira because if we'd given that Ira yeah. away then, it would have been yeah. the rarest card in all yeah. of Fab. Uh, rarer than a heart, rarer than an eye, rarer than a gold foil uh, tunic. Uh, for, you know, extended art, you know, tunic. It would have been the rare. And there was at least two people playing Ira that came close. In fact, um uh, I do remember Andy from Midian Guard came a little, came close to winning. There is someone that did win two ultimate pit fights with Ira, but wasn't allowed to have wasn't allowed to take the the winner. Yeah, yeah. So um, um, yeah, because so, I, I, I I also want to know when, when it's going to be coming available because I'm a big fan of Ira. But again. We will, we will, uh, we will wait and see. This is the great thing about uh, uh, LSS that they uh, they always have uh, things up their sleeves that we don't know about until until they until they drop. Um, but anyway, getting back to Pauper uh, this week, uh, we said last week that we would um, we would spoil a couple of lists if people were uh, wanting to know um, 
uh, you know, ha- having an idea of how to play this this format with all commons. So have you got, have you got a list? What list yeah. do you have there? Alan? I'm going to just let's pull up my uh, hold on. I'm let me just go. Here. I'm going to pull up because um, a couple of the lists are. Uh, but I've got because I'm going to be bringing about four extra decks to the yeah, event. So that is, that is one thing that we uh, that we uh, are offering. If you come along to the event and you bring a friend that has never played in uh, has never played in uh, Alex's event before, so a brand new player, we will give them a deck for free. They can play it on the day and they can walk away with it. Um, free of charge, uh, me and Alan, we are, we are, we are uh, delving into our, uh, our plethora of commons to, to make a bunch of decks that we will uh, have available for new players. Um, uh, if you're not a new player and you just can't be bothered going through and making a deck, we can probably lend you a deck. But, um, but yeah, no, we definitely want to get new players in. It's the perfect time to get your friends who like may have uh, sort of shown a little bit of interest but didn't want to jump in this is for ten dollars they're going to get a free deck and they're going to get to play the tournament and you know possibly win more prizes which well, which would be great minimum minimum one booster and an extended art card as price so um but it's it's pretty it's pretty good um actually there is a shout out there's actually one uh one new player to that coming along who's like a a lot of us magic players remember. I believe Aaron Newson. Um, I believe he's been referred to. Aaron's been referred to the, the largest torso in, in card gaming. I think is uh, what Henry Henry Moore told me. Yeah. So I'm going to so, I'm, I'm going to have to make him a 60 card tech deck. That's uh, that was his classic uh, his classic uh, go to in original verses where his tech was like, yeah, I've got the counter for everything. I was like, yeah, but how does your deck win? It's like it doesn't matter. It's counter everything. I yeah, am, I am so, looking I am looking forward to Aaron Newson coming along. Yeah, no, so cool. um, I'm I'm glad to see glad to see and Ian, um let's make mention that uh, I will remind you on air, please bring Henry Moore's uh, set of cold cold, cold foil foil. equipment that is now um uh, at six months six months late. But um uh, that's fine. Henry Henry has held out for us. So Henry this weekend uh, Ian will remember to bring it. Um but we, um, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he will be. We should also mention prizes because um, uh, I am gonna. Well, first of all, um, my uh, my prize from the previous pauper event. Um, I'm gonna put that up. So that is a whole bunch of uh, foil supers. Um, there's a lot of good stuff like hurricane kick, chains of eminence, um, a bunch of good things. Um, I'm also gonna put up some of my uh, people's champions play mats. Um, I'll uh, give away my Bravo and my um, Dorintia, um, People's Champions mat. Uh, I'm not giving up Katsu. Katsu is always going to stay with me. But uh, these other two mats um, I will give up as prizes. So, you know, they're, they're still, still reasonably hard to get. So um, I think those will be some good prizes. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll delve into my stuff and I'll, I'll find something as well. Uh, plus, of course, there is the bounty that if you can beat both uh, both Radio Reflex players, you will get some weak Radio Reflex merch, uh, signed signed merch as well, which is, is great fun. Yeah, I've got, there's two. There's one comment I'd like you to bring up, just because uh, I suppose Chris is my mentor. Uh, if you'd like to bring up Chris's Chris's comment, this is a, probably a yeah, little that- joke. Uh, Chris, Chris is always telling me. Chris is always Chris. Chris always rides me when we're playing testing games, and it's really good because um, I actually feel myself getting slightly better when I get to play against Chris. Um, and I'm learning how to defend. I've actually played games where I just didn't lose straight away because. Uh, so Chris is always proud of me when I actually defend because I have this really bad habit of being like, I don't want to give up any of my hand. I want to. I want to. You know. I want to play the. Got all these cool cards. I mean, inevitably, what happens is somebody hits me for a lot. And my my hand is not good enough to hit back. So Chris is like, you've got to defend. You got to defend. All right. Um, well, let, let's jump into let's jump into uh, your first deck and let's run it run it through for people. All right. Okay. Here we, we, uh, we will get to uh, Kale. We will get to your question in a second because it's a funny question. Um, but yes, here is um, this is a version on the deck that I actually played at the first pauper event. So. 
This is kind of a mid-range katsu, um, maybe even control uh, katsu. Um, this is kind of based on a list that James um, actually put together, and I try to remember it best I can. Um, so it's a little bit different because my original list had Art of War, and I've made some made some changes for it. I'll just get my mouse and everything. So obviously Katsu harmonized Kodachis, and the idea is just that you are always knocking your opponent for two. Um, in terms of equipment, you've got just uh, Null Rune Hood, just one um, equipment to prevent the Arcane Barrier at the moment. Breaking Scales is fairly obvious. Hope Mission's Hood um, is one that I really like if you need to shuffle back um, some cards, like yours, because, you know, you want to always have one blue zero-cost card in hand so you can power your Kodachis. And Hardened Cross Trap is just great because um, sometimes you need to power off those um, red surging strikes. And Snapdragon Scalers, yeah, obviously... Um, when you need to, um, like if, say, if you want to give uh, push a point, a um, uh, go again, you know, that's the card to do with it. So um, <coughs> I'm not trying to say if there's anything revolutionary um, about it. So in terms of the chains, you've got the leg tap chain and you've got rising uh, rising knee thrust. Um, yeah. You've got surging strike and whelming gust wave. Uh, wounding blow is really good. Um, a really good attack to like either you know to end off some of these chains because you don't have the end of the yeah. chains um, for these, so, and that's really what uh, Whitney Blow and Push the Point are really good for. That sort of replace your your um, your your end, end chains. Yeah, exactly. Um, one other thing that I'm putting is, um, and I think is quite an important combination for Pauper, is Moon Wish. So I'm running two red Moon Wishes and. Uh, three red sun kisses. So, like, you don't always, you don't need to, you know, like, you can just end a chain with moon wish. Um, and the thing is, like, you may not actually play the sun kiss that turn, but uh, getting sun kiss into hand and being able to play it to your arsenal and then have it so you can have it at the end of a chain next turn um, is yeah. going to be really powerful. And um, it's free life for for zero, so uh, it's pretty strong. Um, so I, I think Moonwish and Sunkiss should see more play in this format. Um, the other things is, uh, you know, I've got a lot of defensive cards. So I've got Springboard Somersaults, Sink Below, and, of course, um, I've got Fate for Scene um, and all their red versions. Um, cards that are um, also entertaining, this was a, another, again, another suggestion by Chris, is it's already also running um, Salt the Wound. Again, it's uh, zero cost. It's a yellow. Um, but you know, it's 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 uh, it's a free to end the chain with. If you've hit a couple of times, it's hitting for four. If you've hit with Kadachi twice, it's four damage for zero, which is quite respectable. Mm-hmm. So and, this, and this it, most and likely. It, 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 it is that extra. It, it, it really is the death by a thousand cuts that Katsu is so good at that uh, that that helps yeah. with. But I mean, at worst, you know, you've got a lot of cards that um, defend for free. So you just defend for free, keep the blue in hand, um, and hit them with Kadachis, um, and like one attack on your next turn. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, uh, as I said, Chris gave me a little bit of a few suggestions on it this afternoon. Um, so yeah, this is probably what I'll be playing, but um, we, we we will see, um, because I should really be playing Viserai, but I'm, to be honest, telling you at the moment, I've run for a few different variations um, of Viserai, and I haven't quite had one of light yet. Um, it's real hard going without having like Mordra Tide um, available to you. That's uh, such a sweet card for generating your rune chance. So we will we'll see how it goes. Mm. All righty, cool. Um, let me just I'll bring out. I guess uh, I've got a couple of decks here. Um, I guess. As as I am known as the brute player, let's have a look. Let's have a look at uh, at the brute the brute deck. So this is this is a, a, a very basic sort of aggro aggro brute deck that um uh, that I put together before the last the last tournament and it just tweaked uh, for this all comments. Uh, so the six six bits of equipment we've got the. No, uh, no room hood and the no room boots in case um, you know you know you come across a Kano player or a Vasari player to get that arcade barrier. Otherwise, it's a pretty standard iron iron right helm 
uh, Snapdragon's uh, Scalers, the Goliath uh, Gauntlet, and the uh, um, Hardened Crosstrap. Again, just Hardened Crosstrap's really good to get off one of those attacks. It's always good to have that extra attack boost from, uh, from the Gauntlet. And Scalers, you'll see, uh, there's not a huge amount of... Um, of one costs, but there, um, what you will see is that we are running six savage swings, so you, you, you do, you will have a, a fair chance to use those to get that, that two attack turn in. Uh, we've got, uh, can, uh, Contraband, which I, I think is a great card. Again, you'll see later the action, the non attack action cards we have in this. Um, uh, the primeval bellows, um, which is just really good to be able to get back. Um, uh, and, uh, and then we just have a look into the brute attack. So we've got the six costs. We've got the, um, six, uh, sorry, the six savage swings. So that's the three yellow at six attack and the, the three red at seven. Uh, you've got the pack hunt again. Uh, I am running. I am running with the yellow, the yellow pack hunts again. Obviously, uh, it's a little less uh, consistent uh, in this format, um, but still having the yellow pack hunt and it's got it's got intimidate on the card without having to discard it, which is which is super solid. Uh, Smash instincts again, the intimidate with that without having to discard and and. Um, Six attack, six, six attack at yellow and seven attack at uh, red is, is super strong. We're running the full nine Rick and Rob. It's a it's an absolute must in any brute deck for uh, for this format. Running running one of my favorite cards. Uh, mm. You know, as you know, we as you know we're bigger wrestling fans here. And demolition was uh, was uh, both you and mine. Uh, yeah. So it's sort of in our top tag teams of the 80s. So, uh, Here comes clear. the X. Here comes the smash. Ian, we'll, we'll, we need to get the podcast so you can quickly um, chuck in video clips, pre-prepared video clips <laughs> at some point, because it would be good to remind everyone what their their, their, their their theme song was sweet. No. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, and this is a really solid card because um, other than the – other than the um, Savage Swings, all your all your other attacks are two or higher. So you're always going to have you, you, um, plus you've got the pummels. So you're going to have the cards to uh, to show for the, the cost of um, demolition crew. Of course, we're running uh, three red pummels. Just super solid card. Um, it's always it's always a good card in, in brutes. Um, uh, ben, this is this is uh, this is my go-to card. This is actually my favorite brute draft card, and it's really great in this format. And that is Primeval Bellows. So we're running all nine because um, even at, even at blue, it's a discard a card. It, and and the thing about Primeval Bellows, you just have to randomly discard a card. It doesn't have to be a six plus card to get the effect. Uh, if it is a six plus card, you of course get Rhino's um, character ability. But um, at blue, you're getting plus three to um, to your next attack. At yellow, you're getting plus four, and at red, you're getting plus five. And the key point to Primeval Bellow as well is it's to your next attack, not your next attack card. So it will pump up your club by either three, four, or five. So even if uh, even if you're discarding down your hand. Uh, and you've got enough to swing in with your club, it's going to give you plus three, plus four, or plus five. So, you know, you can, and if you're lucky enough to hit a six, a six cost discard, um, you're looking at your club off a red swinging for 10 or off a yellow swinging for nine. Um, so it can get really big really quick. Um, uh, and that, that is what this deck's about. It's about uh, backing those big hits in. Um, of course, we've got Sink Below, which is just a really good card. Also, that allows you to uh, adjust your hand a bit with the um, with uh, the being able to uh, put one in the bottom of your deck and draw off the top. Um, again, we're running with Lead the Charge Yellow and Lead the Charge um, Lead the Charge Blue. Again, a lot of a lot of two cost cards in this. Um, in this deck, so you you will uh, be able to get the the uh, lead the charge blue um, off. But 
a lot of the time you'll just be using this to pay a pitch to pay for other things and really the the yellow is the one that will get you the go again uh blue again unmovable always good to have that extra um that extra big defense but again a lot of the time you'll probably be pitching this to pay for stuff and lunging press again pitching to pay but also getting that cheeky one damage in uh to, to end the game you know, or, or push push damage through can really uh, can really turn a game. Yeah. So yeah, let's say how much I how much love to lead the charge in Pauper. And uh, yeah. I'm, with this Viscera deck, I'm trying to theory craft at the moment. It really needs those lead the charges to be able to like generate like some rune charms and also just basically to make sure that your Nebula Blade is always hitting for four power. So yeah. I think lead the charge could be one of the more more important cards. I mean, hopefully yeah. after a couple of events, we're going to be able to figure out, um, do some articles on what, you know, the, the key cards in this format are. Uh, yeah, and of course, uh, the, the great thing about both, uh, as I said, Primeval Bellow and Lead to Charge are the sort of bars in the set. And of course, they can both be brought back uh, by, uh, if you hit if you hit with uh, Contraband. And this and this is that, this is where that cheeky, Lunging press to do one damage to get back a, a primeval bellow or a lead the charge is, is, is really effective. Hmm. No, so, but, yeah, uh, so yeah, there's a couple of ideas that that's the brute and uh, the ninja. So, we're, we're, we're really looking forward to seeing what you guys have got to come up with. Um, I think we're, I think secretly we're both playing the same deck on the weekends. Um, Maybe, we're not the same. Not the same deck, but the same hero. Maybe, maybe. I, I think I might have to cut too. But um, two more, uh, two quick points before we go, um, because one thing I noticed of both me and Ian's deck uh, that we have displayed is that we have the adult heroes um, up there. Uh, oh, it's not that, the adult that, heroes. That's it is the young heroes. Because we both um, adapted our uh, our decks on Fab DB. Um, from the last event, we just hadn't changed out, but definitely very much don't care. Uh, secondly, um, sorry, secondly, um, use Fab DB to do your pauper lists because um, if you can print your pauper list and bring it along with you, you know, we'd love to be able to see it um, after the event. Um, but just uh, one little tip, guys if you are if you're doing a deck that has um, IRA cards in it um, that aren't Lunging Press, um, Scar for a Scar, and um, uh, uh, sorry, it's gone out of my head, but um, if you're uh, putting those into your deck, you need to create your deck as an open um, deck. Well, you can modify it, because if you don't do it as an open deck, it will not allow you to add IRA cards to the deck. So just be aware of that. Very important. Very important. All righty. Um, we do have one more one more uh, question. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you cover this one. From uh, okay, this is from Kale Kale asks, Is there a disqualification clause for anyone who turns up to play pop with a full foil deck? No, Kale, but I may I may give you a hug. There may be uh, some kind of bonus okay. prize if you do. I'm I'm totally up for because uh, right, um, we had this conversation. Like James loved a pauper where it was all commons because he was like, you just rock up with cards that are, you know, unsleeved. Just chuck oh, yeah. those unsleeved cards. And just play your game, and it's it, you know it's kind of like you know w- w- how you played when you were a kid. Um, but I, on the other hand, even even if I'm not running four cards, I'm going to have my deck fully. I'm going to have my deck double sleeved. Um, but I would love to see some foil poker decks because I think it's um, a fantastic way to. I mean, foiling looks great. Um, so yeah, hopefully my ninja deck uh, will be foiled, or if I can figure out how to. No, if you play Naira cards, then it won't. <laughs> No, that's, that's, that's true. One day, one day we'll get those four IRA cards, I'm sure, one day. Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah, no, but it'll be cool. So, if, uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully we'll get to see the power of... Because uh, I don't know if Kale actually played the TTS um, corporate event. I can't remember if he played. So maybe maybe he didn't. So it'd be cool to see um, Kale take on... Well, we're just assuming he'll take on Bravo um, for it. So um, maybe Kale let us know in the comments. Um, what you're planning on playing this weekend. But yeah, I'd love to see a bunch of four pauper decks. Um, it'd be cool. Cool. All right. So that is, I think that pretty much covers the pauper, pauper series. Uh, unless anyone's got any more questions about it, you can uh, throw them up in the comments. Um, 
And we've been talking for 55 minutes, so uh, as as we do, we'll we'll finish off uh, we'll finish off uh, the episode with a little bit of Kurt's corner. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and now we we hadn't really thought about this, and we didn't have have a question, but um, one thing that I did notice uh, in the supermarket the other day. Um, well, hang on. Uh, Oh, we just we just got an answer from uh, Kale. So uh, he didn't play in the CTS, but he may put together an injured deck just to play Ira and Torrent of Tempo, which is a great card. Torrent of Tempo, amazing card. Definitely, definitely a lot of fun to play. It is in my um, it is in my ultimate pit side deck, uh, and probably if I make Ira, it will probably be in that as well. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, talking about this week, uh, so I was in the supermarket, and obviously one of the things. Uh, that happens that happened during the pandemic. Uh, a lot of things got um, got uh, delayed, especially in movies and stuff like that. But of course, um, marketing has been put into place. You know, the we- the wheels have been put into place a long time before the uh, um, whole pandemic happened. And so, one of the things that we're seeing at the moment in uh, supermarkets here in New Zealand is the um, the Dori- the the Wonder Woman 1984 Dorito themed Doritos, um, and it got me to thinking. It got me to thinking. Um, so this is today's question, Alan. Um, what's your What's your favorite? Uh, either your favorite or your your favorite memory of um, uh, merchandise tie in a, a product tie in to into, into a movie or a, or, or a franchise. To, to be honest, um, this was a really interesting question that you came up with um, uh, beforehand. Um, uh, but I, I'm, I'm really struggling. But I did come up with one um, that I'm hoping is actually correct because, you know, you have childhood memories and sometimes um, you have to wonder, um, yeah. did those memories actually happen? Um, so my memory of a time is actually with Transformers. There was a milk drink. I assume it was aimed at kids because I only remember it being in those small little cardboard boxes. It's, um, it's that. Yeah. Um, so I have a fun memory of you being able to get. Um, I thought they were stickers, but maybe I think uh, they were actually like um, temporary tattoos of all the Transformers. And the sweet thing is, like, they were. It was the really nice um, images that was like on the the boxes um, on the actual yeah. toy boxes. So there was some the sweet art. Uh, um, the generation one uh, Transformers, yeah. Yeah, so that was that was pretty cool as a kid, and but like you know, like I consider, I suppose my daughter quite spoiled. You know, she gets lots of things, but you know, we grew up in the country. Uh, there's no internet, like you know, things like that. You know, maybe once you know, my mum, you know, mum didn't particularly spoil us uh, at any yeah. point. So I think I might have only got a few of them, but I, I do have this fond memory. And yeah, and uh, since you're agreeing, apparently it did, it did indeed happen. So. Yeah, I, I think I think we're we're both of an age that we remember. I mean, and, and, and to be fair, this is probably what uh, down the line led us into trading card games. Uh, but we remember uh, bubblegum cards, like so, like all the Star Wars, like uh, Return of the Jedi. I remember collecting Return of the Jedi cards. Um, I remember collecting Ghostbusters cards and stuff like that, and they were all always cool and you'd, you you know you'd be carrying around a stack of them like this uh, of of trades and stuff like that and it was always trying to try to collect the set and quite often what they have is they have the set and then as you got the set the back of them would make like a bigger picture um often but that's not yeah. that's not the one memory that i had the wrong memory that i have of a of an actual thai food product was uh return of the jedi there, uh, there was a pops, a jelly, a jelly popsicle tie-in for Return of the Jedi, where basically it was a popsicle that had jelly in the middle, but a pop, a popsicle outside shell, and it was done in the colours of Luke's lightsaber, um, which, uh, which sounded looked really cool in the packaging, but uh, because of course Luke's lightsaber in uh, Return of the Jedi was green. It, it, like 
you couldn't get like that really bright green of the lightsaber. So it came out and it was like sort of like this muddy green color. I was like, yeah, the uh, what it promised on the pack and what it delivered was uh, was very different. Uh, well, that was another thing that I, I remember is that, that there was always a, like an ice block tie-in, but they always seemed to be just a variant on the same gen- generic tie-in ice block. <laughs> I think that one of the problems is there's all these tie-ins involving um, food that is supposed to be shaped by something else. It's like when that designer comes up with that idea in the ice cream factory, it's perfect and amazing. But then that ice cream has to get from the production line all the way to your dairy, where it's probably been touched by about 15 other people rummaging through the ice creams um, before you get to it. And, uh, you know, every time that fridge gets open, it melts, it freezes, it melts. So I think that's the... That's the real the real problem. But I, I can't remember. I mean, I, I can't remember many ice cream ones off the top of my head. But I, that was fairly common, though. It, it was usually popsicles, and it was usually a variant of just a different colored popsicle or something. Um, yeah. Although, also, uh, often, often, much like the bubble of Bill, um, bubble of Bill ice cream, uh, there would be like. A Mickey Mouse ice cream, or like a, I believe there was like a Slimer ice cream for, for either Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters Two, uh, and it was just it was just like the outside shape of of the, of the well, outside shape of of the character yeah. very loosely, um, and it was always really, really because it was always really fake colors, so the ice cream was really just a generic, awful flavor with coloring, um, but yeah, very much a, like. Like I, um, I think they still do it to an extent, not as much. But like I remember when I was working at um, Hobby Master just a few years ago, there was like uh, I believe there was a frozen pol- polar pop frozen. Uh, oh, yeah, that like, uh, yeah, that looked like Olaf the snowman. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, oh, is that uh, yeah. But the other thing I, I, I remember is that the chip companies quite often did it, and back in the 80s, especially, um, you'd get you'd, you'd often get like in a little cellophane bag in the bottom, and you'd either get a sticker or a, or a, as you said a temporary tattoo, or or they used to run competitions and you get like a disc and it, and it'd have a code on it, and it would have an instant winner, or you had to send it in and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, like I, I, I do always remember uh, as a kid being really excited when I saw tie tie and stuff. But yeah, I yeah. think as you grow older and you get a little bit more skeptical um, of it, um, you, you well, realize that it is. I did. I did collect the Star Wars. Um, there was it the Countdown Star Wars Hog thing a few years back. Where, you know, um, you get this, and you know some of them are harder to get. Fortunately. Um, my mother-in-law shopped at Countdown or New World, whatever it was, quite often. So she would always send the, the packs uh, up to me from Wellington. Um, but the thing that um, I, I don't remember, the thing that I, I would love to try, and I don't think they're that good uh, from what I've heard, but I'd love to try them anyway because I, I don't remember them being in New Zealand. And this is also a clever way of turning this conversation back to wrestling, is uh, yeah. getting the wrestling ice cream sandwiches cream that bar. have a, yeah. a image of a wrestler because they've just um, – re-release them in the States. There's like, you can get your Hulk Hogan, you can get your Macho Man, Randy Savage, or you can get your Roman Reigns or Becky Lynch um, emblazoned upon the, because it's a cookie sandwich. Um, yeah. And I've heard that they're not that great because they're just kind of like biscuit and just vanilla ice cream in the middle. But I'd, I'd no, actually, I'm not going to say anything about eating wrestlers. That would that could possibly <laughs> turn out to sound a little bit dodgier. Uh, I mean, it's possibly uh, maybe maybe it's something to uh, uh, look at Martha's backyard or something. One of those American importers, although I would imagine importing ice cream is probably pretty tough. Uh, yeah, if well, maybe if I can right? convince James to take me along in this next American trip, maybe I can gorge myself well, on wrestling Christmas ice cream. Yeah. Be for a while. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's yeah, not or, bad. Also, uh, I don't think okay, our budget okay, allows for you to fly. If we got any Americans uh, listening, uh, just just pop one in the mail for Alan. I'm sure it'll get here fine. Yeah, exactly. Just wrap it, wrap it real good. Wrap it real good. It's somewhere over there. What, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> no, exactly. Maybe put it in a container. 
I'm sure customers are wondering why a milky, a milky, a milky mass of biscuit is uh, is coming through in the mail for me. Uh, yeah, it'd be very odd. But um, yeah, like uh, yeah, it is funny about tie-in. It's just you know strange. We're seeing it was Wonder Woman. Was it? Is Wonder Woman 1984? Or 1988? 1984. Yeah. 1984. 1984. Um, and um, you yeah, know, the movies just not, not out for some time. I believe, yeah. Uh, exactly. Very uh, strange. But anyway, I think that is us. We've uh, we've talked for over an hour, so I think uh, we've covered we've covered a lot of stuff tonight, which is great. Um, uh, I will try and get this up. Uh, as I said, I said as I said, uh, episode fourteen was a little bit lost to uh, to some technical difficulties. I will try and I would try and edit out just the interview with Kurt because uh, I think that was quite good and get that up as well. But I will uh, endeavour to get this uh, this up. Um, in the next day or so as well. Uh, but yeah, that is, that is us. We look forward to, uh, uh, if you're in Auckland, um, we look forward to seeing you on the weekend at our first pauper event. Um, next week we will announce our, our next pauper event uh, with a slight change in the format again. Um, and uh, and we'll go over we'll go over what we what we played um, what we played this weekend and uh, and what the uh, what the the people who won played. Um, you know, maybe maybe they'll be the same thing, but yeah, maybe they're not. Maybe they won't. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we can do an extensive metagame breakdown, really drill down to those details, or we can just look at the list loosely and then talk talk for a while about them. Um, uh, it depends how much time we have between our our busy our busy lives. Yeah. All righty. So uh, so as we said this afternoon, uh, Road to Nationals announced for Taiwan and New Zealand. Exciting times. Probably, uh, 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 yeah, probably time to start uh, ta- start testing uh, uh, what you might might want to play. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, we will we'll leave you to it. Uh, remember, just because we've got zero cases of COVID, still wash your hands. It's just good practice. Yeah, uh, didn't your mother teach you that when you were a kid? Come on, people, uh, cleanliness, cleanliness. Yeah, back in my day, we didn't have pandemics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Stay safe, folks, and we'll uh, we'll catch you next time. See you guys.